Hey guys, good evening. John with New York Metro Weather. Here with the update on the winter storm that's on its way for Wednesday into Thursday. Um, we wanted to kind of check in and provide a video update. We do have a new article out, just came out uh, about an hour ago. And so uh, really the, the best thing to do is to refer to that as kind of a base uh, to read through our thoughts and ideas um, and then check back in here uh, and we'll provide uh, kind of the intricate, more intricate details of the forecast and kind of how it's all going to break down. So not going to get too technical, uh, but just want you uh, to have the opportunity to understand exactly how it all uh, is shaking down. So um, what we're looking at here is the mid-level of the atmosphere, so several thousand feet up. And this, this graphic kind of gives us an idea as to what disturbances are uh, kind of evolving throughout the atmosphere. Um, and again, not getting too technical with the terminology. So if you are, a, um, you know, in the meteorology community, it's going to be pretty basic. But if you are, you know, kind of still learning or just checking it out, I'll keep the terms very simple so you can understand as well. Um, so here's this little disturbance here uh, over the East Coast that provided us with some rain um, and uh, snow today. That's on its way out. And if you look out on the West Coast, uh, this is the, uh, the, the big storm that we're going to be keeping a close eye on here Wednesday and Thursday that's expected to bring a substantial amount of winter weather to our area. But what goes on here with this storm is not the only thing that we need to pay attention to. It's really what's happening all around the entire pattern. So let's just back up for one second, and we're going to back that graphic up to see all of the northern hemisphere. So here's the United States, here's Canada, um, and the really important thing I want you to pay attention to is up here in Greenland and in the Arctic. And so what's happening here is you see all these reds. That means that heights are above normal in that area, and we have ridging, high pressure, over Greenland and in the Arctic. And what that does is it kind of, you know, when the atmosphere is operating fluidly and there's no blocking in these areas, uh, you're going to have disturbances kind of flying through this region. Um, and there's going to be most of the cold air is going to be bottled up up there in the Arctic. When you have blocking like this, you have this high latitude blocking, what happens is it dislodges all that cold air from the Arctic regions, from Greenland, sends it down here into Canada. And what's happening here is because of this blocking, we have a disturbance over eastern Canada, another one here over central Canada, and that's taking all the cold air from here and dislodging it down south closer to our area, number one, but also allowing a high pressure system to build into southeast Canada and New England. Uh, and that's going to keep cold air very close by while this storm develops. And so it's kind of crazy to think, but what's going on in Greenland right now uh, with the weather pattern is going to uh, lead to a chance for a winter storm for us here Wednesday into Thursday. So this disturbance eventually will traverse from uh, where we where we left it off before here in the southwest United States all the way now over into the Mississippi Valley on Wednesday. Um, and <clears throat> as it does so, we're going to see an increase in moisture. We're going to see a low pressure system develop along the east coast right as this disturbance begins to move closer to our area. I mentioned earlier the high pressure because of the blocking up to our north. And here it is. If you look at the ensemble forecast here uh, for Wednesday afternoon, you can see a strong anomalous high pressure here over uh, eastern Canada. Uh, all the way down into New England, while a low pressure system is forming here in the southeast United States and is going to move northward up the east coast um, towards that high pressure. What that high pressure is going to do is going to keep that cold air really locked in place. Um, and because it is so strong, uh, the gradient between the high pressure and this developing storm is going to help enhance the whole entire situation. It's going to lead to bands of heavier snow, could lead to stronger winds thanks to that pressure gradient here. Um, and it's going to allow this storm to kind of form here uh, up the east coast. What's going to be interesting, though, is how far north this storm comes before the high pressure forces it to move scoot off to the east. Because if you look at this map, you can see this high pressure is almost like a little bit of a wall. And so any storm that forms up the East Coast, it really can only go so far because of that blocking we mentioned several times. So this storm is going to make a move here towards the New Jersey coast, but eventually is going to have to be shunted off to the east here um, out to sea. And so the northward extent of the storm is going to be a really critical thing for us to figure out over the next couple of days. And you can see here's where the models have the storm on Thursday morning. Um, each of these individual L's, <coughs> low pressure areas, is one specific ensemble uh, in the European model. And so there's 51 of them here. And you can see uh, there is still quite a bit of spread. Some of them are all the way on the coast here, ocean, near Ocean City, Maryland, or Atlantic City. Some of them are, you know, way off the coast. Uh, this one is the furthest east of all. And when you take a mean or a median of all of these, you get a position, you know, probably about 75 to 100 miles off the coast of New Jersey on Thursday morning. But this is important because if you look at this, you can see 
the forecast is still pretty uncertain. I mean, if a low pressure tracks in this region, you're going to get a very different scenario than if a low pressure tracks closer to the coast. And it's going to determine where those bands of heavy snow are going to set up. And so our forecast for now takes really a blend of all of these ensembles and fits somewhere right in this region with a low pressure system coming up, uh, forming near the New Jersey coast, maybe just off the New Jersey coast, uh, and then scooting off to the east as we move into later on Thursday. Um, you can see the storm initially develops here uh, up through the Carolinas, moves northward to a position off the New Jersey coast, and then it can't go any further north. The system goes to the east from there because of that high pressure and that blocking. And that cold air being locked in means this is going to be a significant winter storm uh, for our area. It's just a matter of where these bands are going to set up. So let's look at what the model actually shows. So here's the low pressure system coming up the coast. This is now Wednesday evening. Snow is spreading throughout uh, central and eastern Pennsylvania into parts of New Jersey, the mid-Atlantic as well. Uh, and you can see that beginning to spread northward at a little bit more of a rapid pace here. Um, and there is a coastal front. So we have rain along parts of southern and southeast New Jersey uh, with a warmer air in that area while the cold air funnels in here. Uh, as we move into the overnight period on Thursday, heavier snow moves northward into eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey, uh, as well as parts of New York City. And then uh, as we move towards, this is, a, this is valid around uh, 1 and 2 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, we have banding of very, very heavy snow here. Uh, with a low pressure system that is inland in Maryland. So this specific model run says it's going to come further west. It's going to be inland here in Maryland uh, and then shift off to the east from there. Notice it, there's, there's no northward progress from this point. It comes up here and then goes to the east. And so the, the takeaway here, if you're in the New York City area for this specific model, which is one that we think has a pretty good handle on how things are going to evolve, uh, snow builds into the area Wednesday afternoon and really picks up in intensity Wednesday night uh, and continues very heavily through the early morning hours of Thursday. This is valid four o'clock in the morning on Thursday. Uh, and then as that system begins to pull off to the east, snow will continue uh, past sunrise on Thursday and then begin to taper off as we move into the later morning hours on Thursday as well. And so as you can see, there's decent agreement in this forecast, but there's still quite a bit of uncertainty as to exactly where this surface low is going to be. And so that's the real factor that we're trying to figure out is where does this storm end up Thursday morning? Is it all the way inland? Is it further to the east? And that's going to dis that's going to help distinguish is this band going to be right over New York or is it going to be a little further north into parts of the Hudson Valley? Um, those are the things that we're going to have to figure out. However, the risk of this storm busting in the sense of this storm not happening or it, you know, going way further inland so that there's rain in New York uh, is quite low. Um, there's a pretty good synoptic support for this storm delivering at bare minimum a significant snowfall to New York City. Uh, what we're working on on our end is trying to pinpoint exactly where those bands of heavier snow uh, are going to be. And so accordingly, here is our map. Um, unfortunately, it's gigantic on this image, um, but it's zoomed in here on New York, I guess. Um, the, the potential for 12 inches does exist in New York. We have that line right over New York City, expecting right around a foot as of the latest forecast. Um, and that, that potential obviously expands further to the north and west. This is really the area that we expect uh, over a foot, possibly as much as 18 inches of snow back into this part of central and eastern Pennsylvania. Um, and then the real highlight, I think, of this map is that sharp cutoff. So we mentioned the coastal front and the warmer air, much less snow further south and east in parts of New Jersey. And um, as we discussed, it's going to be about pinning down where this band is going to be. So is it going to be here? Is it going to be further south over New York? Uh, we're going to be working on that over the next couple of days. But stage is set. Significant winter storm on the way from Wednesday into Thursday. Uh, most important thing to keep in mind is that it looks like the heaviest snow will be overnight from Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Travel will be very difficult during this time. Uh, if you are working an overnight, <coughs> planning to travel from Wednesday night into Thursday morning, uh, I would make alternate plans or at least plan for a very significant delay because very heavy snowfall is likely. Um, and strong winds are also expected. So expect gusts of 35, 45 miles an hour. That'll create blowing and drifting of snow and near blizzard conditions at times. So uh, just be careful out there if you are going to be traveling. And then also expect or prepare for the possibility of isolated to scattered power outages. Anytime you get heavy snow and strong winds, uh, we do see those isolated power outages pop up. So uh, you'll want to have a plan, have a flashlight, have some essentials just in case because you do not want to be without power in the freezing cold and snow and not be prepared for that. So uh, it might, might seem a little silly to prepare for it, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. So we will have updates coming later tonight with the latest model data. And again, on Thursday, we're going to open up another Q&A and we're going to answer your questions live on um, Tuesday. Excuse me. We're going to answer your questions live on Tuesday and kind of 
uh, get get everyone through towards the storm with the latest data and the latest information uh, as we get it. So for now, have a great Monday evening. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys soon.